Hello, I'm Dan Harrison King and it's the 24th of September and my audiobook has just had its premiere, um, The Girl from Sensei. I thought I'd do a video essay kind of thing, but at the end I want to invite people to collaborate with my short story audiobook. So, okay, we've got, kind of got some order to the questions going from the beginning of the story to the end. The questions from Elmfane shot Chris because they are more inquisitive than other questions asked by other NPCs in the world. If you notice, Mr. Shreeswin never asks, where have you been or why are you late? That's when she walks into the Ludamet, uh, Ludamundi arms. The only people to ask questions are Elmfane, Pris and Grainy. Again, hinting at the... Okay, we'll get to that. Spoiler alert, if you haven't read or listened to the audiobook yet, this is a story about NPCs in a video game and how the player has sussed out that one of the NPCs is sentient, that being Elmfane Terran and Chris Parks is the player. And there's a big twist at the end, like a M. Night Shyamalan twist. Okay, so uh, the questions from Elmfane shot Chris because they are more inquisitive than other questions asked by other NPCs in the world. If you notice, Mr. Shreeswin never asks where have you been or why are you late, so yeah. In the story, he just goes, "Ah, oh, Elmfane, nice of you to join us, lass." Like, it, it kind. I was kind of um, aping, pun intended, on the fact that um, Coco the gorilla and other primates that do sign language, they don't. They've never asked a question. You know, if an NPC in a video game was to ask a scripted question, that's that's derived from a human's input, a, a natural sentient person's input but a sentient NPC asking questions to get some kind of idea about feeling or thoughts of the other person that's something that I put in that would differentiate between someone but between an AI that is sentient and an AI that is just scripted uh, chat GPT asks questions but then again that is scripted and it's not true it's not true sentience whereas a, a sign language uh, sign language a sign languaging primate does have sentience they have feelings they have thoughts but they, they they've never asked uh, a human a question so that's kind of where i was going with that angle is grainy sentience slash self-aware going back to that previous point that the npcs don't ask questions of each other grainy does ask questions of Elmfane because he wants to know what's going on he wants to know information so it's up in the air I don't know I wrote this story but is Grainy sentient in this world and knows that he is in a virtual world or is unsure of what is going on but he knows something is wrong and that leads me on to the second point did Grainy shout Elmfane's name on the mountain on purpose just to see what would happen like I think it's quite obvious that from the vantage points that he was at when he saw Elmfane. I'm just trying to think. The sky had cleared, everything had become clear, and it become clear because Pris had obviously used some kind of cheat or hack in the game to make everything clear. And that's when she throws time apart from her and Elmfane so she could have the conversation. But Rainy would have saw the mountain bear, so did he shout um, Elmfane's name on purpose to, you know, witness what would happen? Because Rainy and Elmfane are part of the world and that world can be manipulated in terms of time travel by the player which is Pris. He only has one shot and obviously coming on to the latest stuff with the Pauldron Makers and the um, Pris accusing him of being a, a wretched scumbag and all that plays into the fact that Rainy doesn't know what he's done because it's kind of gone back. So Rainy isn't aware of what he has done. So is he sentient or not? I'm not sure. I'll leave that up for um, reader interpretation. Is Pris's true self-projection even the real projection of the player? So basically, is, um, does Pris look like she does? Is she a she? Is she a he non-binary? You know, that, that player obviously doesn't have to look like how they look in the game as depicted in the picture that I drew. But that's how Elmfane knows Pris. Is Pris using their real voice when they speak to Elmfane for a mic or whatever? Is is Pris even their real name? 
you know, as far as the story's concerned, Pris is a female who looks like she does in the game, and that's how Elmfane knows her. Is sleep for a sentient NPC necessary? So sleep for humans is kind of like a reset. Download memories, collate memories and stuff like that. So if an NPC is sentient and they're, they're within a computer system and have their own processes going and machine learning and neural networks and stuff, and that's how they operate as a, you know, that being their neurons and stuff in a, in a program. Would, would, an N, would a sentient NPC or a sentient being within a computer program, would they need actual sleep and would they dream? You know, as far as Elm Thing is concerned, sleep is real to her and sleep is something that she needs. You know, it happens with computers now. You, re you restart a computer to make it go faster if it's um, slowing down a bit or you shut it down for a while or, you know. Is sleep for a sentient NPC necessary? I would say it is. In the Pauldron Makers, when Pris uh, whispers a life in reference to Elmfane, or is she whispering alive in reference to Grainy? Like, because in the story, all we have is Elmfane's interpretation of the whisper. Is Pris saying a life in reference to Elmfane? Therefore, let's say we'll get on to the, the passage of time in a sec, but. Chris has spent a lot of time with Elmfane in this world and is that the life she was referring to because something, something terrible has happened and all that's gone out the window or is she referring to the fact that Grainy is alive and she never noticed the fact that Grainy is alive in the same way that Elmfane is alive that sort of interpretation as far as it's concerned in the story Elmfane hears Chris say um, a life. <sighs> so yeah, I'll leave that up to audience interpretation, but as I say, it's Elm Thane's um, interpretation. The passage of time between the cabin and the pauldron makers, yeah, so part three starts with Chris and Elm Thane having a conversation about her sentience in the cabin, to which Elm Thane doesn't understand, and then Granny turns up and says, do you want to go down the pauldron for a couple, and Elm Thane's a bit perturbed, and she says, yes, uh, give me an hour. Chris says she'll come as well. And then there's a real change and difference in Pris when she gets there and she has all this hatred for Grainy. I want to get across that there has been a considerable passage of time between the cabin and the, um, the meeting at the pauldron makers because Pris said that she was going to go in disguise as the old man. And then when she turns up at the pauldron makers full of hatred and sad and you know, angry. She didn't. She wasn't in disguise at all. That's just like um, suggesting that she's get on, get on with the job of what she knows she's got to do. So there was a first meeting when they went, and she did go in disguise, and she did whatever. And as I say, she got. Um, I, I'll tell you my side of the story of that missing time, and there is the second meeting where. What has happened has happened. A considerable amount of time has passed, and that's what happens on that side. So, is it months, years between Elmpain and Pris's relationship and Grainy doing what Avery did? I'll leave that up to audience, reader, speculation. Who's telling the story? So, yeah, it starts with Elmpain telling the story at the beginning. Yeah, my name is Elmpain Terrin. Um, I can't remember the rest. My name is Elm Payne the, st the story I am to tell you happened to me several months ago. I'm still alone. Blah, 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 a bit corner. And it ends with Pris telling the story about how she's gone back to her world. And so who's telling the story? Is Pris telling the story and the beginning of Elm, the beginning with Elm Payne telling her story? Is that somehow extracted from the game? And then like a, a diary that she wrote in and it's extracted by Pris and put into the story and stuff like that. Don't know. Speculation again. Okay, so before I tell you my version of events about what happened between the cabin and the pauldron makers on the first run through. And what happened with Grainy and Elbane and Pris. I invite others to create their own stories about what happened using... The girl from Sincere's reference um, about what happened between Elmfane, Pris, and Grainer. 
uh, in the passage of time between the cabin and the pauldron makers say as i say i have my own version of events but i want to see what other people come up with so you can submit them to end-to-end production mail at gmail.com that's my email address i do youtube and everything through i want to see what people come up with what was what was the thing that was so horrific that chris wiped all of our life with elm pain up until that point went back to start again only to delete grainer remove him and then get Elm Fane so mad with her because she doesn't understand because she's got no knowledge or memory of the incident happening but the the real person the player obviously does because they've been playing it so what was so horrific for her to do for Pris to do that okay so my version of events <coughs> I'll do it concisely so listen up this is what happens between the cabin and and the pauldron makers. So, Chris goes down to the pauldron makers. <coughs> um, also, because she, she knows how, how sentient that elm thing is, she basically. So it's not completely fleshed out, but that's basically where the story is going. But I want to hear what you guys have come up with. So thank you very much. And if you haven't checked, well, I was going to say if you haven't checked out the Gellus and say, then check it out. But if you're watching this and you haven't checked it out, then I've just spoiled everything about the Gellus and since then. But uh, yeah, thank you for all the um, views on the shorts that I released up until the premiere, uh, premiere, premiere date, which is today, the 24th of September. And yes, I've got another video coming soon where I, well, well, I'll explain in the video what's going on. Thank you.